Good morning and welcome to this, the 99th virtual bridge session. And I'm pleased to say that we're bridging our way to a different education sector this morning, and that would be primary schools, and um, because we've got something to learn across the delivery. And today we're pleased to have with us Stuart Naismith of Greenhill Primary School, um, who's delivering on weird science, uh, how to deliver STEM in, well, different circumstances at the moment, maybe weird circumstances. Um, and so with that, um, it's an introduction to Stuart and I'll start off with the first question uh, for him. Stuart then, um, tell us a little bit about what uh, STEM with Mr N is all about. Yeah, well um, obviously towards the, uh, the start of this year uh, we found ourselves in lockdown and the schools were closed and teachers had to all of a sudden move to virtual learning. Now at that point in the school my role was to cover all of the teachers non-class contact time so I was doing STEM with all of the classes from primary two to primary seven. And I had to find a way to try and deliver STEM education to them from home. But a lot of what I do with the STEM stuff is practical and it's exploring. I thought, how can I, I keep that going? And there was a project I was going to do with the primary six, seven class who were looking at gravity at the time. And that was going to be making pendulum waves. And I'd already had all of the equipment for it. And I thought, well, I'll film this video um, showing about pendulum waves, how they work, me piecing it together, explaining the science behind it. I'll put it on YouTube so anyone in the school can access it. I'll probably only get six views, look like an umpty and never do it again. And, and that's what I did. So I pieced the video together, um, had to learn a whole new editing software, felt very uncomfortable doing all the speaking parts in it, um, it something very new to me, and put it online. And within a couple of hours, one of the pupils had responded to me on Teams saying, oh, that's you now get 36 views. And I was like, oh, well, that's a lot more than I thought. And um, as of a couple of days ago when I last checked, that video's now got over 500 views, um, which is the most successful one I've done and none of the rest have reached those lofty heights um, as yet. But that then committed me to doing it every week. And it just went from there with me looking at what, other topics can I do, what experiments do I already know, what new experiments can I learn and I just kept producing them uh, week on week to give them that sort of STEM experience that they would normally get with me um, but able to see it at home and everything I was doing used uh, simple equipment that a lot of people would have at home or could easily get their hands on so that they could replicate um, the experiments at home because I prefer pupils to get hands on with STEM rather than just sit back and watch a demonstration. Uh, thank you. And, and, and in the beginning, did you have an idea as to the format? And did you have any idea this would grow into be a, be a series? Um, I didn't really have an idea of the format. Um, funnily enough, when I was out uh, walking with my wife and son at the weekend, I was talking about how I seem to now have catchphrases that are used and people use around the, the school. Um, because all, all my videos start with um, hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N and there's a, a wee spiel that goes on there. But I always I've got a wee trailer section at the start of every video and I always say, let's check it out. And now in the school, people will be joking about if something happens, we'll go, oh, that'll be a STEM episode. Let's check it out. And it's, it's like one of these throwaway lines that I said in the very first one because I was very uncomfortable <laughs> sitting speaking to, uh, speaking to my phone, <laughs> um, basically. And un unfortunately, because that's how it started, to try and keep myself comfortable, I went, well, I know what I'm saying, I'll keep doing that, and it's, it's now become the thing. So to start with, I had no idea of the format. As I say, I had to learn a whole new editing um, software that I'd never used before. So I didn't know how I was going to piece things together. Um, for the first one, I wanted interest in music to go with, um, with the, the trailer. So I just said, well, I know Jupiter from... Uh, the planet sweep by hosts i'll use that and just from that first video i thought well that was successful so i had classical music so i now have classical music in every video and i had my reintroduction part which i now have in every video um and every video has a trailer section at the start so the format all just grew from how i made the first video and i've tweaked and refined since then but i had no plan uh, to begin with when i when i first started them Fantastic. Well, let's check it out then and see what we're talking about. So just about to share my screen. And are you seeing that? Yeah, excellent. And here we go. Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr. N. But every week I'll be performing different demonstrations 
and explaining the science behind what we're seeing. This week, we're going to take a look at air pressure. Let's check it out. Some of the experiments I'll be performing this week should not be done at home without adult supervision. Look for a caution logo in the top corner of the video to point out what experiments you will need adult help with at home. This week I decided to get one of my friends involved in the video. I gave him a challenge. He was to take a square of toilet paper, scrunch it down into a bottle, place it just inside the end of an empty plastic bottle set that plastic bottle down on a table and blow that ball of toilet paper into the bottom. We'll check in later in this video to see how he got on. About air pressure, and we want to know how he got on. He will be able to blow a ball of toilet paper into an empty plastic bottle. Let's see how he got on. So there's an example and that's something that of course we're all going to have to try now when we get to find a plastic bottle and a little bit of paper so uh, um, very engaging in terms of that and I, th I think that short clip showed some action uh, shots at the beginning as well what goes on. Uh, I just wonder how many people are and I might be inclined this way and perhaps you are too um, looking for the little uh, caution sign because they are the things that you really want to do um, indeed. <laughs> Um, so, um, is there, uh, can I ask then, obviously this has uh, involved quite a bit of work to, to do this. Uh, what was the motivation for adding this to your no doubt already substantial workload? Initially it was, um, just as I say, the, the digital learning, I had to find some way of providing uh, engaging STEM. So though it would take a few hours to film it and edit it, I could do it in my own time. I'd just become a dad at the start of lockdown for the first time. Um, so I was trying to, to juggle supporting my wife with a, a baby who didn't sleep, but uh, was, was a bit of a nightmare. So these STEM videos I could do um, when my wife had, had my son and was doing things with him, I could film it, I could edit it at night when uh, he was in bed. So it meant I wasn't restricted to the, the school day for doing it. As long as I was providing this, um, the school were very supportive and very happy. So it fit in with, with family life at the time. Then, because it was successful, and we were still in lockdown heading into the summer holidays, I thought, well, let's keep it going so that during the summer, if pupils are looking for something to do, or parents are looking for something to do with the pupils, they've still got these videos. And then it, I've just carried it on. Um, I've currently found no reason um, to stop. Um, towards the start of this school year, I was contacted by Harper Collins, um, the publisher, um, who asked if I would do a couple of videos um, relating to products that they had. So I did a maths-based one, uh, promoting some of the maths textbooks that are published by Lecky, but HarperCollins are the sort of overarching um, publisher of that. Um, Twinkle, the, um, the teacher website with a resource website, um, they were uh, talking about uh, collaborating with them. So when things like that were happening, I thought, well, let's keep it going. And while the, while the views are still there, as I say, they're not reaching the lofty heights that they were at the start of lockdown, but if I keep putting the content out, it's still there and people will come back around to it and, and can find it when they search. So um, there's that reason, because I can't teach STEM this year, and a lot of teachers can't teach STEM this year, just because of the virus and sharing resources, it gives teachers um, the ability to use the videos to still have STEM in the classroom or parents to do it at home and I enjoy it. <laughs> science science is, is my thing. Um, although I have no science background before becoming a teacher, um, I, I just love it and love finding new experiments. So I enjoy it. The pupils enjoy it. They still talk to me about it in the school and they're still getting views. So until all of that stops, uh, I'll, I'll keep it going. 
Can I ask, were there other people's resources available that you could have used, but you decided to personalize it yourself? Um, or what, was it the case that there was nothing really that was going to be suitable and you had to fill the gap? There, on YouTube, there are STEM videos and there are people that, that do some of the same demonstrations um, that I have done. But what I didn't want to do was um, sit and spend hours trying to find somebody else's video. Um, and because I would have to watch them all through, make sure it was suitable for the children. Um, also, I thought it would be more engaging for them, uh, for the pupils in my school, if it came from somebody that they knew. Um, I was having to provide learning for them anyway. And because I enjoy doing the experiments um, at home as well, I just decided rather than spending all that time to find lots of others, I would, I would just do it myself. And so the practicalities then, what's going on behind the scenes when you produce one of these uh, videos? Uh, what's, what, what's, what's, what's the setup? And what's going on? How long does it take? I've got a lot better now. It, it's a lot more um, refined. Depending on what I'm, what I'm doing, I can usually get um, all the filming done of the experiments and all the spoken parts in an hour to an hour and a half now. Um, the editing's what takes um, the most time. And it really depends then on what sort of experiments I'm doing and how many different camera shots I've, I've got. So when I'm filming, um, I use, I started off with just one GoPro camera and my phone. Uh, one of my GoPros, part of it broke, so I got another one. So I now use two GoPros and my phone. So that allows me to get different shots and edit things um, together in different ways to make it more engaging than just sitting watching my face the whole time. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to watch that. So I'm sure lots of other people wouldn't as well. Um, so with a more complicated video where I've got lots of different angles and I'm having to splice bits together, editing can take a good three to four hours. And then I've got the time converting from the editing software into the MP4 file, which um, can usually take anywhere from 35 minutes for about a six minute video. And then the, the 15 minute videos that I've ended up having um, can be over an hour for that. Um, I usually sit with a laptop to make sure nothing goes wrong at that point um, when it's pulling. And then the upload to YouTube, again, usually takes a good hour and a half, but quite often I'll just leave the laptop sitting um, to do that itself. Um, but I've got a lot more slick now with my cameras, knowing what shots I want. And because I always film in order, it makes editing uh, much smoother. I know where, where to find things. Um, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of bloopers with expletives um, that goes on behind the scenes as well. And very careful not to edit those into the <laughs> the final cut. I'm sure that's a, and uh, also that extra GoPro camera is handy for strapping to a rocket and firing across the football pitch right? the, and all sorts of other good things indeed. Uh, so what sort of reception has it had uh, then the YouTube videos? Who's using the videos and how? Um, what sort of balance of um, your school pupils looking at it? Um, any ideas to whether parents are are, are watching it or whether it's the the pupils triggering looking at them? Um, I think it's a bit of a combination. So in school, there's certainly a lot of pupils that have said to me, oh, I've, I've seen your video. Um, so they seem to be the ones going to find it. But I get a lot of tweets um, from parents saying, oh, we, we tried this one or um, oh, I saw that and I, I wouldn't want to try that myself, but it was, it was really interesting. A recent one I made mixing milk and vinegar to make Christmas ornaments. Um, one of the parents was like, that was fascinating, but I am scared to do that just because she's worried it's going to go mouldy and smell. Um, I've got it hanging up in my classroom and it's perfectly fine. Um, it gets retweeted by other schools. Uh, there's a boy in the, the special needs school that we share a campus with who every time he sees me, um, he always shouts, oh, I'm, I'm your number one fan. So there's, there's certainly um, nice things coming from pupils there. I'd say Harper Collins and Twinkle were in touch about um, doing a couple of things, which was, um, which was amazing. Uh, that they just ha had come across them. Um, the videos that I put on Facebook, I put, always put the trailers on Facebook. They get lots of views from various teachers. It doesn't always convert over to um, views on the uh, on the actual YouTube channel based on the, the numbers on either side, but more and more people are following the Facebook page and being aware of it. So I know that teachers that are then wanting to at least have access to this resource and are maybe just waiting for something to come up that suits the topic uh, that they are doing. 
Um, and there was somebody else that I had in my head that's been involved, and now it's just gone gone right out of my head um, that it wasn't in, in terms of reception. So if I remember, I'll, I'll I'll come back in with it, but I've just slipped my mind there who it was. And looking back, is there anything that well lessons you've learned along the way, or things you for anyone else uh, doing a similar activity, uh, good top tips or advice that you'd give to them? Always try out the experiments before you uh, film them. There have been, and I know it's I know it sounds really obvious, and there were some experiments that I have never done before that would come across and go, that looks really complicated, I'll try it, and then I'll film it, and that was fine. And then there was lots of others where that's dead simple, it's only a couple of resources, the thing's saying it'll work, and I've sat down and I've spent ages filming it, and it's not worked. And uh, I got caught out with my siphons video recently, um, where I test, I had it, this was odd, I had actually tested the siphon, but then I had changed the straw that I was using when I went to film it, and it completely screwed it up. I spent an hour and a half, the experiment didn't work. Um, so that would be the main thing is um, test everything first and have an idea of uh, what sort of camera shots you want. That took a lot of time in the early days for me, um, fiddling about and changing camera angles. Whereas now I think about it a lot more in advance going, that this is what I'm going to do so I know where I'm setting everything up. But those would be the, the two main tips. If you want to make your own videos, um, and maybe test out some video editing software to begin with. Um, and I think it's quite clear as well that um, that uh, it, it may be a 10, 15 minute video, 20 minute video, um, but don't just block off half an hour to achieve it. Um, and I think um, your, uh, your, your videos have a, a great um, character about them. They're quite homely and natural, um, but still quite slick and, uh, and quite professional. And I think that balance does take uh, more time than someone might reasonably think. In a way, it looks like, oh, camera stuck in front and it's done. But uh, from what you're saying, then the investment of time is quite substantial. I'm, I'm glad it looks um, a lot more straightforward than it is. <laughs> it means I'm doing something right. Because um, it's certainly, certainly not as, as straightforward as it might appear. I do remember in my past, um, we shared videos between different countries about students' experiences going to study in different places. And the German professor provided a video which was one hour long of him standing at the end of a room, uh, tiny on camera, um, and reading out a script for an hour. And uh, the comment was, well, at least the students will know what they're going to get uh, <laughs> when they arrive in Germany. But I think uh, multiple camera angles and obviously the uh, very active um, experiments going on, I think, are very engaging. Uh, so uh, moving on to sort of the final questions then about once the pandemic is out the way and hopefully before too long and, uh, and such, is this something you're going to continue? I do intend to continue this um, while, while the pandemic's out, out of the way. As I say, for as long as I'm enjoying it and it, it's getting views and people are engaging, which I can now come back around because I've remembered the people I'd forgotten when I was talking about engagement. There was um, a teacher in the Highland Council who was had asked permission to put all the video links into a document for uh, the teachers in her cluster to be able to access all the videos and then just a couple of weeks ago um, an education development officer for Edinburgh City Council contacted me and said um, we'd love to share this around can you fill out this form with the information about your activities uh, and we'll send it around so as long as things like that are still happening and people are still following on the Facebook page and watching the videos and children are still enjoying it then um, I'll keep it going I might need to reduce to rather than one a week, maybe one every two weeks, um, depending on workload and when my wife goes back to work as well. Balance and nursery and things might, might need to do things like that, but I don't intend uh, to stop um, anytime soon. Got no plans for that. Wonderful. Okay, I'll open up the floor then to any questions. Who's not coming there? Okay, oh, uh, I'll go with Owen first before coming back to you, Kenji. So for season two, have you, um, what would you like to do different or what would you like, you know, as a, would you like to get more complex? Would you like to get more advanced or back to basics? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure because I've had quite a mix in there so far of complexity and, and, and simplicity. And I think I quite like 
going that way because then some of the younger people that watch there's still things for them coming up on a regular basis and then anyone who does want anything more advanced um, there's things like that probably the most complex I've gone so far was I did the double split experiment which is quantum physics um, that was that was very advanced but it popped up in a children's book that I was reading with my current class um, so I thought I can demonstrate this easily in my kitchen so Better than using that. Schrodinger's cat, I guess, and putting the cat in the box. <laughs> um, it, it, it wasn't wasn't that, and certainly, um, but we did speak about that oddly enough in class, uh, Schrodinger's cat, because that's also in the book. Um, so I think I'd like to just keep that sort of mix. And even within the one video, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes there can be really simple aspects to, um, to be able to view something and, and get the idea of how something works, and then a more complicated um, version of it. So... I'd like to just try and keep that balance if I could. Thank you, Kenji. Over to you. So it's been seven months since you started making these videos. And you, and I've, I've had a look at your channel. You have a host of videos there. Is there anything that you've learned since you've started that's changed the way that you produce these videos? Have, what's, what, what kind of lessons have you learned as, as you've gone through this, this journey? Um. Just give me a moment to, to think about what, what I have what I have tweaks have going on. Um, I suppose it, it started off. I was um, just posting the YouTube links on to Teams and a wee trailer on Twitter um, for the for the parents. And as more people seem to be getting involved, and I'd messaged a couple of head teachers and said, "Can I tag you on Twitter as well?" And as more people were getting involved. I thought, well, this is this is more beneficial than just to my school or the couple of head teachers I know. So how can I make this this wider? So I've then actually focused a lot more on how I piece together my trailers and trying to make them look engaging, so that I can then share it on Facebook and try and drive um, interest from there. So I I think I was about thirteen videos in, maybe not quite as many as that when I first started my Facebook page. Um, but certainly I was a good few videos in. And since then, the trailers just on the Facebook page have been viewed almost 54,000 times across all of the trailers. So I say that's not quite converting over to my YouTube views, which are, are just shy of the 4,000 mark across all the videos. But it shows us an interest in it and an appetite there. So I take more time to um, make sure I've got an engaging trailer um, for it and then sharing it on different platforms. Um, it's probably been the main sort of thing I've learned is the engaging trailer is what tends to drive the views across either viewing viewing the trailer on Facebook and following the page or then actually going on to the, the YouTube page. Hope that answers your question, Kenji. So you're obviously very proud of this. Do you have a personal ambition? Would you like a bigger audience? Um, what's the, what, what is the ambition? Uh, the, the ongoing joke, um, which is only half a joke, with um with my head teacher is I'm waiting on the BBC coming and signing me up. Um that that oh, I don't think will happen. Um if um right right now the ambition is just to get the uh, video viewed more uh, the, get the word out about it more around um various councils and schools um recognition from the likes of the STEM ambassadors and the STEM learning hubs. Um, I've applied for a couple of STEM awards this year on the back of it, so if there's some recognition for, from that, but I'm not looking, not looking for the recognition for a personal reason. I'm looking for it because it will get the um, word out um, more to people that this is there, and just promote STEM learning more to uh, to pupils because you see it a lot these days with um, flat Earth and anti-vax and chemtrails. There's there's all sorts of things which. Um, stems from a lack of um, STEM understanding or education. So if these videos can help bring more STEM education to people and try and avoid um, pitfalls of, of pseudoscience, that, then that would that would be great. But the BBC would be a great way to go. But as I said, I don't see that happening yet, but you never know. You never know. Well, we, we'll bang see the film rights. Um, Amy has asked a question. I don't know if you can come off mute and ask it yourself, or I'm happy to ask it on your behalf, if you prefer, Amy. 
Uh, I don't know what sort of context you're in. Um, okay, I'll, I'll ask it then. Um, uh, have you thought of doing sessions in other locations? And also add to that as well, the, um, there's a bit of a trend towards shorter videos for attention span reasons. And uh, and yours are um, actually, they're not hugely long, but uh, very engaging. And, and I suppose they're made up of different parts as well. So have you thought about different formats and different locations? Um, different locations, um, I haven't really considered much about just now because I'm, I'm limited on where I can go. Um, quite simply, um, they started in my kitchen because it was the most open space that we had. Although, depending on the experiments, I've then moved outside. Um, I'm now filming in my classroom because it works better with with home life. But um, when when things open up, it would be nice to film in different locations. Um, at the primary science development officer for North Lanarkshire Council wants uh, me to do some videos with them, just to promote their science inquiries within the curriculum. Um, so that'll be filmed in a lab. If somehow I could then be able to film there just on my own, that would be that would be good. But it's not something I've given a lot of thought to. And in terms of different formats um, with the video lens, um, my video lens just vary based on what activities I'm I'm tying together. Um, recently, I've tended for shorter videos. Uh, one because it works better with family life, and um, just filming in the school. The cleaners kick us out as well, so I need to be out by a certain time. Um, but also the it does help keep the attention span. But some of the most viewed videos that I've got are the are the long ones. And I think as you as you alluded to there, Jason, it's um because they're broken up into smaller sections, you can you can jump ahead. Um I know you're probably most likely to jump ahead to the caution logos and and seek them out and and uh, and try out those ones. Um so and, it, and th the thing is when I'm saying I've not considered a lot of things, because I've not had lots of feedback on try this or, or try that. The most valuable bit of feedback I got was um, buy a, a lavalier microphone and it would just make your audio clearer. Um, but beyond that, I've not had lots of feedback other than the videos are great, keep doing them, uh, um, you know, children are enjoying them, uh, that sort of thing. So I've not considered lots of other, other things. Well, if it ain't broken, and then don't change it indeed, and nothing to fix. And I think one of the very um, engaging things about it is the fact that it started in the kitchen. It was an automatic link to everyone else being at home and thinking, I could do this and see how it works. And I think even the uh, sort of minimalist classroom setup as well is if you're doing it in a lab, then you begin to think maybe I shouldn't be doing this in my kitchen. But uh, obviously a large part of it is being able to replicate and have fun with the experiments yourself at home. Well, Stuart, I'm very grateful for you joining us, especially uh, due to uh, the demands on school Wi-Fi and um, and rules against Zoom. Indeed, joining us from your car, and uh, um, yeah, and um, hopefully you'll gain a larger audience. And as I say, we'll be expecting uh, the film companies to come along anytime. Stuart Naismith, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.